Hi guys and welcome to this my video on percentage of data lying within multiple standard deviations of the mean. A title, Cambridge, make them shorter not longer. This whole video one day is going to be just about reading the title, much less doing the content. My name's Darren from Maths Guru. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you are doing so voluntarily and not under duress. If you are under duress, that's also good, but can you do me a favor? Go to YouTube and subscribe. That little click of a button from you means that actually I just get to know that people are watching and that would be great to know that people are actually watching these videos and I'm not in a room talking to myself. I'm also on TikTok. I know, go figure, huh? Now let's see what we're going to look at uh, today. Our learning objectives to be able to consider the percentage of data lying within several standard deviations of the mean for a range of distributions. What? If you notice, there's lots of language in maths. And the more the language is there, the more it confuses people. And I actually think it's there as a bit of a trick. To be able to apply our knowledge of the mean and standard deviation to understand a data distribution. Okay, we can sort of see that standard deviation. We met that in a previous video. To be able to introduce the 68, 95, 99.7 rule for symmetric and bell-shaped data distribution. Hmm, symmetric, we've met that before as well. So it's starting to build on all the previous knowledge. And if you haven't watched those videos, head back. They're on mathsguru.com, as are all the notes that you can download and write all over as I'm talking as well. Now, in the previous video, what do we look at? We looked at the standard deviation was given by the sigma of x minus x bar squared all over n minus 1 which we then square rooted. And I said in a previous video that it's highly unlikely that you will ever be expected to do that in an exam. It's way too time consuming. They might do it for a very small data set. But other than that, we would use our CAS to do it. But what was the standard deviation? Well, it's just a way for us to split our data into sections. We've met one way that I'm gonna talk about in just a moment, but splitting data into sections can become really useful and provide lots of information massively important next year in year 12. So this is a bit of a grounding, all right? So if you notice, we've got this diagram here. We met it before a little bit in our previous lesson. Let's unpack it. The interquartile range. If you remember, that was one way of splitting my data, wasn't it? Yes, so if we think of it again in terms of a cake, if I had all my data in a cake, the interquartile range splits my data in half. It splits each of those halves in halves again. We have my upper quartile, and my lower quartile, and as such, we can look at the middle 50%. We can look at the spread of the middle 50% of the data. The only reason we do this is to basically get rid of outliers. We don't like the outliers. The middle 50% is quite useful, yeah? But again, that splits my data into quarters. So if I had a whole list of data there, there would be my uh, median, here would be my lower quartile, and here would be my upper quartile. So I'd have 25% of my data there, 25% of my data there, 25% of my data there, and 25% of my data there, yeah? So I could have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example, yes? Where I could find my lower quartile and my upper quartile. So splitting data into 25% is one way of doing it. But as it turns out, it's not particularly helpful or there is other ways of doing it that actually provides us more information. Now, this thing here is a bell curve and you are going to be doing VCE and everything is graded there on a bell curve. And what's important to remember is a bell curve is always centered around, well, whatever that thing there is. Well, that's a mu. No, I'm not moving at you and it's a Greek letter. All right, it might be mu. I don't really know. I don't speak Greek, but that mu is actually the mean, right? So whatever the mean of the data is, that is going to be the central point of this symmetric distribution. And notice it is absolutely symmetric. Now, the standard deviation, if you remember, was the gap between the mean and this point here. So that line there is one standard deviation from the mean. But so is this gap here, because basically I can go the other side, and that there is a standard deviation. That is a standard deviation. So between those two lines that I've just drawn, there are actually two standard deviations, one on the left of the mean and one on the right of the mean. Ah, oh, and as it turns out, because someone way cleverer than I am, they worked out that 60 8% of my data, 68% of my scores, 68% of my students, 68% of the people I've spoken to, fall between one standard deviation either side of my mean, all right? So, 68% of my data 
is between minus one standard deviation to one standard deviation. So 68% of my data fall between one standard deviation either side of my mean. But hold on a moment, we also know that this here is a standard deviation. And this here is a standard deviation. All of these gaps are exactly the same. So whatever I've worked out my standard deviation to be, that all of those gaps are exactly the same. Well, if I look at two standard deviations either side of the mean, all right, so again, I've got, if I've got two standard deviations either side of the mean, it tells me that 95% of my data fits in there. So 95% of my data is between minus two standard deviations and two standard deviations of the mean. So there are four standard deviations in total, two on the left and two on the right. And if I've got 99.7% of my data, it's between three standard deviations either side of my mean. So three standard deviations to the right, three standard deviations to the left, that will have 99.7% of my information now, or my data, my students, my scores. Now, this line here is quite important because here, in that little end bit there, there's 0.15% of my distribution. And that basically, if you're doing a VCE, is pretty much where they put the score for a 50. So if you wanna get a 50, you've got to be more than three standard deviations away from the average score. And while I'm not getting into that at the moment, just realize that they're peg pegging that at roughly 0.15% of the population. Whew. Tough. Now, bell-shaped curves are really, really important. And as I say here, you're gonna hear it over and over and over and over and over and over again. But when they give you a question on this stuff, right? You have got to realize they will always give you the mean and they will always give you a standard deviation. So for example, if I told you that I have done a test and the mean score was say 30, hmm, that sounds interesting because isn't that, I think that's the mean of your study scores for general maths and a standard deviation of let's say five. Now what that means is I can now draw a bell curve I know it's got to be symmetrical. I know that this central value here is now going to be 30. I can split this as always three sections, three seconds on the left and three seconds on the right. And I can now know that each of these gaps here are five wide. So if my mean is at 30 and I've got a gap of five, this value here has got to be 35. The next line has got to be 40 the next line's got to be 45, right? So if I'm adding on five when I move to the right, I need to take away five when I move to the left. So that's gonna be 25, 20, and 15. So 30, 35, 40, 45, right? So when you get questions on this, they're gonna give you the mean, they're gonna give you a standard deviation, and you're gonna to want to draw this or at least interpret it. So what I now know is that between a score of, let's say 25 and 35, between 25, to 35, I know that 68% of my population will lie. So that means that maybe 68% of the state got a study score between 25 and 35. What about 95%? Well, again, we just go out to the next sections. So now, because we want two sections on the left and two sections on the right, I would say that I would know that 95% of my population got study scores between 20 and 40. And likewise, if I wanted to say what 99.7% of my scores were, they would have gone between 15 and 45. So just this information here allows me to draw a bell curve, yes, um, or a symmetric distribution, put on the information, and then work out some percentages. Now, obviously, there are outside percentages as well. And in many cases, questions ask you for those, right? So if we now look at one standard deviation either side of the mean, so that's what that means. There's my mean value. Let's imagine there's a dotted line through here. Let's say that is minus one standard deviation. And this one here is one standard deviation. It says here mean plus one standard deviation. That's fine. If I know as per the rule that 68% of the data lies in there, then it means that 16% must lie on that side and 16% lies on that side. And people go, how do you know that? How do you know that? Well, what's the biggest percentage you can get? 100. So I know under all of those curves, there's 100%. 
I know in that middle section, there's 68%. And when I take those away, I get a 32%. Hmm. So that means that the rest, those, those outside sections, 32%, but they're equal. It's symmetric. So they've got to be the same. And what is half of 32? 16. ka -ching. Thank you very much. Likewise, if we look at this 95%, again, this line here is two standard deviations from my mean. So two standard deviations from my mean. 95%, if I do 100 minus 95, that gives me 5. Divided by 2 gives me 2.5%. And again, we can work it out from our last one. So these are really, really important. Put them in your summary book. Trust me, it's going to be very, very useful. But also, if I know that 68% are between those two, then that must mean that 34% is there and 34% is there. And so you can go, you can have each individual slices, you can have all, trust me, there are ones online that are gonna be very, very useful. So let's look at some examples before this video gets too long. There are lots of questions which can be asked, but they generally have the same idea. As I said earlier, the distribution of the examination scores of a very large statewide examination is approximately symmetric and bell-shaped. They're talking about the VCE. Oh, no, they're not. They've got a different one, all right? With a mean of 65 and a standard deviation of 10. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a bell curve. I'm going to put my mean on of, what did it say, 65. It's got a standard deviation of 10. So I'm going to split this into one, two, three sections on the right, one, two, three on the left. Standard deviation of 10 means I'm going to add 10 on, take 10 off. So 65, 75, 85, 95, 55, 45, and 35. I promise you, drawing diagrams is gonna make your life so much easier. Lots of people try and do this in their head. I don't know how, and then they tend to get it wrong. <clears throat> so now it says approximately what percentage of students scored between 55 and 75? So I'm gonna color in 55 and 75. Hold on a moment. That's between one standard deviation, either side of my middle value, isn't it? Ah, well, we know that. I can just look at my diagram here. One standard deviation, either side is 68%. So in that situation, I would say it was 68%. Approximately what percentage score between 45 and 85? Well, if I now color in 45 to 85, I'm effectively now two standard deviations either side of my mean. Two standard deviations on the left, two standard deviations on the right. Ah, but I know what that means. So if I've got two standard deviations on the left and two standard deviations on the right, that's 95%. So there we go, we've got 95%. And approximately what percentage of students fall between 35 and 95? Well, again, if I color in those sections, I've got three on the left and three on the right, three standard deviations on the left, three on the right, and that means that we must have 99.7%. A fairly trivial example, but they do this a lot in exams. The distribution of the diameter of bolts produced in a factory is approximately symmetric. Always useful to know because it basically is telling you you've got a bell curve. With a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 0 0.01. Eesh. All right. So I'm now going to draw my diagram because that becomes important. So here is my bell curve. I'm going to draw my 1 and then split that into 3. Split that into 3. All right. So what was my mean? It was 5 and a standard deviation of 0 0.01. <coughs> So that's going to be 5.01, 5.02, 5.03. Now, again, I'm limited for space. You can draw these things as big as you need to. I'm now going to take off 0.01. So that's going to give me 4.99, 4.98, and 7. Okay, now if you don't know how to do that, use your calculator. Don't just guess it. Now, the great thing about maths is we can do it forwards, we can do it backwards, and in which case they're turning this one on its head. So, if approximately 68% of the bolts measure between A and B, what are the possible values of A and B? Right, well, 68%, we know that's got to be either side, one standard deviation either side of my center. So, let's color in one standard deviation either side of my center, and let's just read off the values. So, there we go, that value there is 4.99 and 5.001. So in which case, the value of A would be 4.99, and the value of B would be 5.01. If approximately 95% of the bolts measure between C and D, what are the possible values for C and D? Well, okay, 95% is 
is two standard deviations either side of the mean. So I'm trying to find the value that lies on that line and on that line there. Well, 4.98. So C would have to be 4.98 and D would be 5.02. And if approximately 99.7% of the box measured between E and F, what are the possible values for E and F? Well, again, 99.7, that very specific amount, goes between three standard deviations on either side of the mean. So my value of E would be 4.97 and my value of F would be 5.03. ka -ching. And again, if you can do that, if you can draw the bell curve, do my center value, add on whatever our standard deviation is and take it away, I can't see how you would ever get confused with any of these questions. And there we go, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much, hopefully you have found it useful. Again, this is scaffolding stuff that's coming up much, much later on. Head over to massguru.com, sign up. It's absolutely free to sign up. There are downloadable notes, there are lessons, there are time codes, there's all that type of stuff, and a lot more lessons to come. Hopefully I'll see you in one. If not, you take care, and please stay safe.